Hey guys, welcome back to another video about the history of Spokane. That's annoying me. All right, no more wind chime. If you're just joining me, I'm doing a series of videos about the history of Spokane, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at one of Spokane's most iconic landmarks, the garbage eating goat. What's up guys? I'm in Riverfront Park right now and I'm gonna meet with someone named Tom Keefe to talk about the garbage goat. So stay tuned. So this goat was made by the nun Sister Paula Turnbull for the 1974 Spokane's World Fair, also known as Expo 74. The goat is basically a huge vacuum or, well, not that huge. It's like, it's a vacuum, okay? Basically you push a button and then the mechanism turns on and you like, have some trash with you you just give it to the goat's mouth and it sucks it up into the vacuum into the dumpsters in the back back in 1974 this went along with the theme of the fair which was the environment to get some more information about the goat and sister paula i met up with tom keefe who was a good friend of sister paula's sister paula was my mother's best friend for life literally and when I moved to Spokane a little over 20 years ago, I uh, reacquainted myself with Sister Paula and we became really close friends. She worked in a lot of art forms. Uh, during a lot of her career in the Sisters of the Holy Name, she was a, a school teacher at the grade school level. She always taught art, um, really thought art was an important part of an education and a curriculum. And she used to take groups of students to Europe and she would always take breaks and sit down with her easel and paint whatever it was she saw there. So she had a lot of really beautiful watercolors. I remember one time going to see her in her studio and there she was nearly 90 years old standing there with her goggles and her blowtorch working on a piece of copper bending it. So, you know, she worked in a variety of forms, but I think she really loved uh, copper. She really liked soft metals that she could mold and make into statues and gates and different things. She remembered going to a zoo where they had a lion's head mounted on the side of a fence in front of a garbage can and kids could come and put their garbage in, in the lion's mouth and it would drop in the garbage can. And that sort of set off a spark in her mind about, well, you know, if you're going to do the head and the mouth, why not the whole body? And what would be the right head and body? Well, it'd be a goat because goats are kind of famous for pretty much willing to eat anything. I also had an interview with Karen Mobley a while back and she also had some things to say about the garbage goat and Sister Paula. I see her as a personal hero, you know, she made the garbage eating goat in 1974 when she was teaching at Fort Wright College. It's just a really playful, wonderful object and I think it's held up really well, you know, it's, it isn't quite 50 years old but it won't be very long before it is. and. You know, it still, I think, it brings joy to people in the same way that it did when she first installed it in 1974. I've seen so many people playing with it over the years, both putting garbage into the goat, but also riding the goat and, you know, piling a whole bunch of people on the goat. You know, there's a lot of, of really positive interaction with the object. When we realized it was the 40th anniversary of the fair, that meant it was time for a 40th birthday party for the goat. And so I called up the Sisters of the Holy Names and invited them all to a birthday party. And, and we're going to have a lunch down at O'Doherty's Pub ahead of time. And then we're going to go and sing Happy Birthday to the Goat. And Sister Paula and her, and her fellow sisters all showed up. We all had a really nice lunch. And Sister Paul was all dressed up in bright colors and I wore an all-white suit and we linked arms and we walked across the street from O'Doherty's over to the goat and we had a nice birthday cake there and we cut a slice of cake and Sister Paula went over by the goat and held it up in front of the goat's mouth and somebody pushed the button and zoom! The goat gobbled up his piece of birthday cake and so they, that's and the sisters were so happy and so joyous that day and uh, Sister Paula looked so great. It's a day that I'll really always remember how, how happy she was that her goat you know, was so popular after 40 years. 
Sister Paula worked on many other art pieces. She made a statue of Mother Rose de Roche, who was the founder of the Sisters of the Holy Names, and that's just the group of nuns that Sister Paula was in. The bear mascot at Central Valley High School was also made by her, and then she also made a memorial for a man who died at Spokane Wastewater Treatment. And that's just a few of the statues she's done. She sometimes laughed and sometimes lamented. She said, I've done a lot of artwork over my years, but I know the only thing I'm gonna be remembered for is the garbage goat. And she accepted that. To get to know the goat is to get to know Spokane, because the modern era of Spokane really began with Expo. And the goat is the dominant figure from Expo. And so it's, it's really a link to uh, Spokane's past and its present and its future. And I think the goat and Sister Paula would both want you to think about environmentalism, cleaning up after ourselves, not leaving a mess behind. That's the enduring message from the goat. So guys, I hope you learned a little bit about the garbage eating goat. Uh, I hope you know more of the history about it now. And I hope you visit Spokane and check it out. You guys all have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.